Shabbat Shalom. Not so great. It just rained. Maybe we're feeling uh, like we got schmutzy or wet. But we got to bring that Shabbat Shalom in a little bit. We have so many simchas we're celebrating. It's Shabbat. Raise your hand if you're going to have a bar mitzvah. Yeah, there's three. I, I think there may, maybe, maybe a wannabe fourth. Uh, it, we have so much to celebrate. Are you ready? Yeah. I got this. Yeah, definitely. How are you feeling? Good. Between yeah, definitely, a head nod, and good, I think we're ready. I think, I think we are ready. Uh, it is also new member Shabbat, and I know there are many new members that are logged on, and we see you. We cannot wait to wrap our arms around you, even at a great distance, like a middle school dance, and hug you. It is so great that you're joining us. We wish you a joyful, joyful Shabbat Shalom. And uh, before we get started, what I'd like you to do is take a moment, turn to the person next to you, write in our chat online, what are you most grateful for on this Shabbat? What are you most grateful for on this Shabbat? This is getting you ready for what are you most grateful for, say, on Thanksgiving? What are you most grateful for on this Shabbat? Turn to someone maybe you know, maybe you don't know. Introduce yourself. What are you grateful for on this Shabbat? Just to share a couple of things on the, uh, on the chat, uh, it says, Sandy Berger, it's public, I'm going to read it, it says, I'm still upright. We are grateful that you are upright too. Good health, great health, community, and so many more. Uh, let us get ready to celebrate the Shabbat, and we have a very special musician, we have a special guest, uh, Alvaro. I, did I butcher that? You it. Oh, I was, I've been practicing. Alvaro Bermudez on guitar. His guitar stills are sick, so we cannot wait. Shabbat Shalom. Let us rejoice on this beautiful day of Shabbat. We're on page 654 if you'd like to follow along. Erev. Shel Shoshanim. Shiva 
And Mazel Tov, Mazel Tov Troy on coming a bar mitzvah early in the morning tomorrow. You can come be seated. Yeshua Koach to the whole family. We continue on page 138 with Lacha Dodi. <laughs> Remain standing on page 144 for a <laughs>
on page 149, praise to you, Adonai, our God, from whom the evening flows. Your wisdom sets the way on which time and seasons glide. Your breath guides the sail of the stars, creator of tide, of time and light. You guide the current of day into night. As heaven spans to infinity, you set its course for eternity. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, for whom the evening flows. Baruch Ata Adonai, Hama Ariv, Aravim. Will you join with me at the top of page 151 in the English? As you taught Torah to those whose names I bear, teach me Torah too. Its mystery beckons, yet I struggle with its truth. You meant Torah for me. Did you mean the struggle for me too? Don't let me struggle alone. Help me to understand, to be wise, to listen, to know. Lead me into the mystery. Baruch Ata Adonai, Oheb Amo Yisrael. Please be seated. It is great joy that I get to invite up one of three Bar Mitzvah boys today. I'd like to invite up Troy to help lead us in our Vea Hafta. Troy, do you love the words of the Vea Hafta? Yes. Into the mic. Yes. Wow. Which ones do you love the most? Vea Hafta, which means to love, I think. <laughs> wow. Wasn't expecting that answer, Rabbi Siegel. Deep. Uh, in your Torah portion, are you happy with it? We can change it. Yes, I'm happy with Good, it. Good, because we can't change it. <laughs> we are super excited for your simcha. You have worked very, very hard and have made your parents, your grandparents, uh, your siblings very proud. And, and as a community, we couldn't be more proud of you already. So when you're ready, if you will lead us, wrong page, in the Vea Hafta, uh, on page 154, we can all join with him. Beholeva <laughs> Uktav tam le oat al yadecha, beha yu le totafot bene necha. Uktav tam al mezuzo betecha, uvi shareha. Leman tiskeru vasitem, et komit votai, vitem kedushim lohe ham. Ani adonai lohe ham. Asher hot se tietem, me eret mitraim, dio laham lelohi. Ani Adonai Elohechem. Adonai Elohechem Emet. Did you breathe at all throughout that? <laughs> my, my only wish in life now is to hear you sing Ani Yodea at Passover uh, and to see how fast you can do that. Um, it, it's a it's, uh, beautiful, beautiful job. How did it feel leading us in the Be'ahavta? Very good. Very good. Well, 
I am proud of you. Your rabbis are proud of you. Uh, and, um, and I think you're going to just do an incredible job tomorrow leading us in meaningful worship. Yeshukah, mazel tov. Thank you. We don't typically clap uh, in the synagogue, so afterwards, you need to go, we do this, we do a lot of those, we, I love that, I love that. Uh, afterwards, definitely go up to our uh, B'nai Mitzvah, go up to our three boys as they become a Bar Mitzvah and uh, shower them with praise and love. It's, it is hard work, especially during a pandemic. Which now leads us into the words of the Miha Moha. Uh, traditionally, uh, we, we say these words uh, and we should reflect back on what it means to be free people, uh, to be able to join a synagogue, to be able to watch as a second or third or maybe even a fourth generation receives Torah for the first time, uh, should uplift our spirits. Let us take that uh, and put that into uh, these words, the feeling, the praise, the singing of Micha Mocha on page 158. Shabbat. How could we not be having anything but fun and joy? Uh, we continue with the words of Hashki Venu.
you rise as we continue with the our tefillah, our amidah, on page 164. Please be seated. May these hours of rest and renewal open our hearts to joy and our minds to truth. May all who struggle find rest on this day. May all who suffer find solace. May all who hurt find healing on this day. May all who despair find purpose. May all who hunger find fulfillment on this day. May this day fulfill its promise. Baruch Ata Adonai. Mekadesh HaShabbat. Rotze Adonai Eloheinu Be'amcha Yisrael, Tilatam Be'ahava, Tigabel Uti L'Ratzon Tamir Avodat Yisrael Amecha, Korov L'Chol Korav, Pane El Abadecha Ve'achonenu, Shefoach Ruchacha Aleinu, Betechezeina Eneinu, Beshuvcha L'Tzion Barachamim, Baruch Ata Adonai, HaMachazir Shechinato L'Tzion. Let our eyes behold your loving return at Tzion, blessed are you, Adonai, whose presence returns at Tzion. We acknowledge with thanks, Adonai, that you are our creator and that we are so fortunate to have your love, the blessing of friendship, of family, of good health. Maybe just the blessing of being upright is what we're thankful for. What are some other reasons you're thankful for on this Shabbat? Think about it. There are quite a few new members in our kahal. For what reasons are you grateful? Maybe you haven't had a chance this week to contemplate this question. Shabbat gives us this time. So think for a moment. Turn to the person next to you 
and say one thing you're thankful for on this Shabbat. And here's the caveat. Whatever you were thankful for in the beginning of services doesn't count. There's no freebie. What are you grateful for on this Shabbos? Turn to the person next to you. If you have to introduce yourself, say Shabbat Shalom. Take a moment online. Add more to the chat. What are we grateful for on this holy day? Seventh day of the week. That's long enough. Now you're just chatting. <laughs> Shout it out. Let me hear one thing you're grateful for. Food. I got food. I got family. Being back. Who said that? Raise your hand. Being back in the synagogue. Amen, amen. In your original seat. I love it. What else? What? Being born in the... What? Being born in the United States. Ah, having freedom in the United States. Amen, amen. Having our freedom, a freedom of religion. Uh, the freedom to pursue highest levels of education. Uh, the freedom to create relationships with all different people. Amen, amen, amen. What else? One more, nice and loud. Rabbi Siegel. Thank you. Our new members joining our community. If you're new at Temple Judea, don't be shy. Just raise your hand so we can all look at you awkwardly. Yes. We see you. We already love you. And now you're going to introduce yourselves and take five minutes each and talk. No. Uh, welcome to Temple Judea. We are so happy you're here. This is one of the great, great, great joys uh, of our community is welcoming new members uh, some who haven't been here in a very long time, uh, and some who are new to this holy space, uh, we welcome you and we see you online as well. For all these blessings and so much more, O oh God, our Redeemer and Helper, let all who live affirm and praise your name and truth. Blessed are you, Adonai, your name is goodness, and you are worthy of each of our thanksgiving. Baruch Adonai HaTov Shimcha Lehodot. The freedom... One of the greatest joys we have, the greatest benefits or blessings that we have uh, is that of shalom, of peace, certainly the pursuit of peace, but knowing that we can gather here in the sanctuary uh, and be safe and secure, uh, knowing that we can uh, create relationships with different people and that it's, it's one of the best joys of being an American. And so we take a moment on this Shabbat and thank God for the shalom that we have in our hearts, in our homes, and in the world.
take a moment for our own silent prayers as we pray from a collective space to our own individual thoughts as we pray. We think of our loved ones who are in need of, of healing, whether it be of body, mind, broken heart, soul. We, we think of them. And on this Shabbat, our community prays for Mary Arnold, Hope Ellen Collar, Yifat Bat Yoram, Judy Brown, Darren Williams, Mauricio Lara, Sharon and Paul Weiner, Bennett Greenberg, Ronald Horwich, Alice Horwich. Isabella Della Josue, Marty Gitlet, Sara Batsal, Natalie Keegan, Edwina Cherubin, Roberto Levin Lowenstein, retired Judge Marvin Gilman, Doria Levenstein, Yoli Marlowe, Mariana Green, Greg Miller, Batya Bat Menecha Mendel, Stephen Carlin, Jessica Hunter, Peter Stein, Eliza Pelia Bat Abraham Besara, Yale David, Marsha Kropf, Karina Kasanas, Brenda Tucci, Carol Shulkin, Steve Hertz, Shirley Harris, Kelly Henley, Rini Feingold, Mark Kaplan, Steve Winkler, Diane Arnkoff, Ilana Miriam Bat-Chava, Judith Greenberg-Friedman, Joe Botkin, Yael Bat-Leah, Eva Wilson, Jenny Wasserstrom, Jeff Clark, Noah Schwartz, Sandy Kramer, Vivian Whitkoff, Naomi Ulster, Dana Pelletier, Michal bat Sara, Gloria Fe Gittel Bat-Ruth, Valentina Lechvetsky, Nancy Pastroff, Kyle Gittleman, Josh Rosen, Erwin Fetter, Sonia Greenberg, Hazel Bernstein, Elaine Ben David, Maria Yameno, Eileen Danheiser, Barbara Dorman, Jesse Friedman, Josh Snyder, Bella Lopez, Dr. Herbert Mercado, Patty Campo, Heschel Ben Mindel, Gloria Chekinow, Howard Israel, Carol Pascal, Dr. Herbert Mercado, Ellen Leesfield, Orlando Catano, Alan Trupkin, 
and Michal Leb. If there are other names that you're thinking of for our communities, Misha Berach, please put them into the chat. Uh, and if there are others uh, who would like to say Misha Berach, a prayer for healing for a loved one, please stand here in the Kahal as Rabbi Siegel and I come around the room. May God swiftly send all of our loved ones complete renewal of body and spirit. And let us all say, Amen. Shabbat Shalom. It's been a strange year as we've sort of been coming out of this pandemic, hopefully moving forward, moving into a different phase, a new phase. And what has amazed me and is such a joy and such a blessing is how many people continue to be a part, an active part of the Jewish community, who continue to show up, who continue to do whatever they can and to find joy in coming to services, just being here. And it really is a joy to see you in the building. And those of you who are online, we love seeing your faces online as well. And when you're comfortable, when you feel safe that you can come in, we hope you will. And meanwhile, we've had members continuing to join our community, our sacred community. And that is such a blessing as we grow in love and we grow in spirit as we continue to add more wonderful people to an already strong and wonderful community. So right now I'd like to invite you, if you are a new member, to come up here. Don't worry, you don't have to do anything but just, you know, be. Be here so we can see your faces. If you will, come up, come and join me. And also, if our, our membership committee chairs would come up too, that's Hillary Gershman and Samantha Sharp. And, nope. Oh, okay, not them, but if we could have our new members come up and join us up here, we would love to have you so that we can welcome you properly with a blessing. And we know that some of our new members are also online, and I don't know if our uh, spotlighters can spotlight any of our new members online. We would love for you to be able to do that if you can. Do you mind? Uh -huh. That's not going to work well. 
Um, I would love to have you introduce yourselves, but the, it's not going to work great um, with the microphone. So I am going to say a special blessing, though, for each one of you. And we do look forward to getting to know each one of you and your families as you <laughs> become a part of all things Double GD. Some of you, it's funny, some of you have already been very involved for a while now. So it's great. I love that. And hopefully those of you who aren't, you, are, you will. And so, a blessing for you. May the one who blessed all of our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, bless each one of you and your families. May you be blessed with the blessing of community. May you be blessed with continued learning. May you bless, be blessed with many simchas, many joys, many times together as we all grow and learn together as we continue to build a better world through tikkun olam, through fixing this troubled world, and make more opportunities for holiness everywhere. And we say, Amen. And a special blessing for you. This is called the priestly benediction, the priestly blessing that I offer to you now, along with Rabbi Fish, who's going to say the English after I chant the Hebrew. Yair Adonai Panav Elecha Vichunecha Yisa Adonai Panav Elecha Vyasem Lecha Shalom Ken Yehi, Ken Yehi Ratzon May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May you always know that you, your family, your friends are welcome here at Temple of Judea that our doors are always open to greet you, to embrace you, to learn beside you, to counsel you, to laugh with you, maybe l'chaim with you, and all of these blessings, may you be blessed with shalom of true peace. And we all say, Amen. Amen. Mazel tov. Mazel tov and welcome. To all of us a mazel tov. Can we have a little semen tov? Would you like? Of oh, course. We would, we would like. Mazel tov. Many more simchas together. Simen tov. Mazel tov. Mazel tov. Simchas in this group, I'm just going to say, that are here. There are weddings coming up. There are all kinds of good things. So may we all have many Simchas together. We like those. A new film is going to premiere tomorrow night on CNN. I saw the commercial. It is called The Hunt for Planet B. Have you seen it or heard about it? Looks kind of interesting. The film follows scientists as they build and plan for the December launch of NASA's Webb Space Telescope, a massive machine that will be able to peer more than 13 billion light years into deep space toward the very first stars and galaxies in the universe. It is 100 times bigger than the Hubble, and it's going to be able to look at the very dimmest, earliest galaxies in the universe. It will also yield new data into the search for possible signs of life on what are called exoplanets, planets outside of our solar system. This is incredible. This could change our understanding about our history and the creation of the universe. Since the beginning of time, we have wondered if we are alone in the universe. We may learn things that will open up new possibilities and help us to gain new understandings of ourselves and our place in the universe. This could also change the way that we view the future. It is very, very exciting. This week in our Taurus cycle, we also have a very exciting time. We read of Jacob, our ancestor, moving in his own journey, away from his past, from a family that he has deceived, when he lied to his father and stole the birthright from his brother. He crosses over a river and he wrestles with a divine being demanding a blessing and receiving a new name. Yisrael, 
one who wrestles as he moves forward, reuniting with his brother and moving on into the future of his life. Isn't this the perfect metaphor or symbolic story for what we are all doing right now? Aren't we all wrestling with so many things, reckoning with our past, struggling with our current reality, and trying to move toward a better future? I believe we are. And there are so many things that we are struggling with as a society right now, in this moment. Justice, racial injustice, a racial reckoning, you could say, struggle for gender equity, environmental justice, there's so many, many, many more. But I wanna to talk tonight about just three significant areas that I think are important, areas that we are wrestling or struggling with to find a place in a new world, in a new environment. The first one is as Jews. As Jews, we are wrestling with anti-Semitism and how we both express our Jewish identity and pride on one hand, and on the other, the knowledge that anti-Semitism is real, or as some of my colleagues call it, just plain Jew hatred. There is hatred for us for being just who we are, just for being Jewish, for wearing that kippah or Magen David or Israeli flag, especially on college campuses right now. There are real threats and dangers, and that is not right. Yet what is our choice? Do we hide our identity? Do we pretend not to let it bother us? Do we speak out more and louder? I have to say I had a strange experience last night walking through downtown Miami on the way to a book fair event and I was wearing my kippah, which I don't usually wear outside of the synagogue, but I was on my way and ready to go and had it on. And I realized I'm walking through downtown Miami and it must seem, I don't know, maybe strange to people to see particularly a woman, but a person wearing a kippah walking through downtown Miami. I didn't feel scared, but I thought about it that Maybe I might be a target for someone. I might get stopped by someone. I kept walking. This week, my colleague and friend, Rabbi Peter Berg of the Temple of Atlanta, Georgia, blessed and installed a mezuzah on the doorpost of the second family's residence, along with first gentleman Doug Imhoff and Vice President Harris. This is the first time in US history that an executive home has a mezuzah on the front door. It is a true moment of pride Meanwhile, a new book was published by Arthur Mark Oppenheimer called Squirrel Hill about the deadliest anti-Semitic shooting to ever occur in our country just a few short years ago, killing 11 people at the Tree of Life Synagogue, which included two other congregations in its building as well. When I spoke with the author last night at the book fair, I asked him what we can learn from those terrible events. To paraphrase, he said, the strength of their community was that people really knew one another across all boundaries, really knew each other. The Jews in the Reform Synagogue had the phone numbers in their cell phone for the Jews who were involved in the Jewish Federation, who personally knew the rabbis and lay leaders of another synagogue who were close friends with the people who were not Jewish, the non-Jewish clergy and the police officers and the chaplains. Everyone knew each other so well that they were really, truly able to be there for one another when it really mattered when it really counted. It was those close connections beyond boundaries and even beyond Jewish boundaries that create that tight-knit community that after the shooting, the community has been able to remain healthy and solid and heal in very significant ways. That's what most of the book is about, actually, is the healing and the light that comes after such a terrible thing has happened. After many mass shootings, there are often suicides among the survivors, but not in Squirrel Hill. The book captures the strength of the community, all the while acknowledging that they are wrestling with the same questions that we are, about the sustainability of the non-Orthodox Judaism, about assimilation, about intermarriage, about debates about Israel, and back to anti-Semitism. Just one of the things we are struggling with today. So if our first debate is about anti-Semitism and Jewish identity, I believe our second one that 
is very important right now is how we will all move forward in what we hope will be a post-pandemic time. And specifically in congregational life, but organizational life and Jewish life, we know that all of the multi-access worship and learning are with us to stay. We have our online people who are so enjoying the opportunity to connect with our worship services and learning from home, and we're glad to be able to provide that with the help of so many people in our staff and lay leadership. And that is to say, to be clear, we always now offer online as well as in-person Friday night services, and it's going to be more and more true as we move through the year, carefully choosing whether it makes sense and is safe to have programs in person, online, or both. As you know, this takes tremendous effort, and we want to continue to be sure that our programs can be accessible to everyone who wants to be able to be here, whether in person or online. We're especially grateful to our pandemic task force, our vaccination task force, and all our lay leaders who have helped us through these very difficult times. Today, I was on a URJ Zoom meeting to discuss these questions that synagogues are facing across the country. And it was comforting to know that we are not alone, that we have many communities to turn to, to help us with, and the URJ itself, the Union for Reform Judaism, our umbrella organization that we are a part of to help us along this path. And so if our first struggle is anti-Semitism, our second wrestling match is with this pandemic, I'm gonna go back to our third of something we heard from Rabbi Goldberg last week. And that is our own continuing wrestling with God, with our own theology, with our own beliefs, Rabbi Goldberg spoke about it last week, and for anyone who missed it, he wrote a book about this uh, that is available on CCAR Press, and you can find it online on our website as well. It is possible to be a good Jew and to have questions about God. And Jacob, in his wrestling match with this divine being, comes out with a blessing. And thinking about God, we can pick up clues all around us, perhaps left for us to find like the design perfection of the human body and nature's beauty. Just because we can't see or touch something doesn't mean it doesn't exist. We can't see oxygen, but we would die without it. Infinity is beyond comprehension, yet an integral part of modern science, and love is a power feel feeling that cannot be proven, but may be a gift of God. Conscience, that little voice inside us, may also be one of God's gifts. Religion is not about who God is, but about what God helps us do. Those are words from our reform movement's uh, prayer book. And so I want to encourage you on this Shabbat to take the time to do your own wrestling with your own faith. Do you see clues in life to God's existence? Do you have unanswered questions about how God operates? Do you hold back from religion because of your unanswered questions? How might you begin your personal journey to wrestle with God? And how could a journey in life be more important than the destination? As we look out to space to learn more about the universe, we will also learn more about ourselves. As we struggle with the realities of our own world, may we, like our ancestor Jacob, turn those struggles into many, many fold blessings for ourselves, our loved ones, the community, and the world. Amen. like to, it is a great honor to invite forward Caroline Miller, our president, to share our congregational announcements with us. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. 
It is always a joy to see you at Shabbat services, and tonight a special joy to see and welcome new members. Thank you. Whether you come in person to our synagogue or virtually attend our services, please know you are always welcome. I am Caroline Miller, the president of Temple Judea, and I want to thank Meredith Ginsburg, Stuart, Brooke, and Troy Walensky, and Craig Silverman for lighting the Shabbat candles. And thank you to Shona, Daniel, Aaron, Rex, and Natana Blonsky, who will be doing the Kiddush and Motzi blessings tonight. Mazel tov to Troy Walensky and his family on Troy's Simcha of Bar Mitzvah. And mazel tov to Aaron and Rex Blonsky and their family on Aaron and, and Rex's Simcha of the Nei Mitzvah. We hope that you'll celebrate Thanksgiving and Hanukkah by doing a mitzvah. Help us collect food and household items to donate to the Jewish Community Services Kosher Food Bank. Drop your items off this Sunday, November 21, between 9 and 11 at Miami's, at Milam's Pinecrest store. Check your temple e-news for the list of items needed. Join Phyllis Levy this Sunday, November 21, at 7.30 p.m. to discuss justice or revenge in post-Holocaust Jewish cinema. The film title is Remember and can be found on Amazon Prime. Visit our website for more information and to register. Come celebrate Hanukkah with your Temple Judea family. On Friday, December 3rd, we will celebrate Shabbat and Hanukkah in the sanctuary. Don't forget to bring your menorah. We will light as a community. Following services, we will have a Shabbat dinner and Hanukkah discussion with your rabbis. Space is limited, and you must register in advance to attend the dinner and discussion. On Saturday, December 4th, we invite families with young children for Shabbat and a Hanukkah morning sing-along and play at the Gitlitz Family Playground. Masks are required, and there will be sufganiyot donuts. You must register in advance for this event. If you have not already, please take a dreidel with a child's name on it from our lobby if you would like to participate in a special mitzvah during the upcoming Hanukkah season to buy gifts for children from JAFCO, the Jewish Adoption and Foster Care Option. Directions are in the lobby. Join us tomorrow with our virtual minion service at 9 a.m., followed by virtual Torah study at 10 a.m. Be sure to read your weekly e-blast or visit our website for the Zoom links. All are welcome. Shabbat Shalom. Our service continues with the Alenu on page 586. Please rise. Alenu le shapeah la adon ha kot la tret kerolar il tsebreshi shela sanu kagoye haratsa
I do want to acknowledge that it is Transgender Awareness Week this week. And this week, November 13th through 19th, this was a time that was created to celebrate trans people, honor identities and educate others about the needs and struggles of trans people. And at the end of this week, actually tomorrow, is Transgender Day of Remembrance, a day to, a memorial day to recognize the countless lives lost to transphobic violence around the world. And so tomorrow is that day. Many synagogues across the country do observe this Trans Day of Remembrance because as Jews, we believe that all people are made in the image of God and each one of us is holy and sacred. We turn our thoughts to all of our loved ones who are lost, who no longer live on this earth, but who continue through the blessing of memory, who continue to be a part of our lives in different ways. And so tonight we remember the yard sites, the anniversaries of the deaths of these loved ones, Joseph Kamner, Morris Eisenman, Ira Epstein, Samuel Gershman, Jacob Benjamin Gertz, Dr. Joel Heffler, Louis C. King, Colonel Jack Lane, Linda Levy, Abraham Munich, Malcolm Newell, Bernice Pollock, Sidney Rickman, Gertrude Rubin, Dora Weitzner, Richard Shapiro, Bielka White, and Esther Wolf. We also remember loved ones who have been lost in the last year, and we remember them with love. Esther Botlea, Sandy Fisher, Anthony Carmona, Sally Weintraub, Robert Satinspiel, Ayala Anavim Yafa, Peggy Sella Gordon, Susan Picard, Randy Robbins, Sophia Lambert, Carol Horowitz, Stephen Indianer, Francis Kolarek, Clifford Stein, Michael Pearl, Michael Tobin, Justice Gerald Kogan, Rabbi Solomon Schiff, Morris Levitt, Edward Lassoff, Thelma Stein, Evan Reed, Barry Hesser, Fred Diamond, Faye Pushkin Aronson, Vivian Machaber, Pearl Wald, Robert Siegel, Dr. Stanley Jacobs, Joan Rubenstein, Rosalind Winter, Murray Diamond, Fred Chekinow, David Dollinger, Robert Joseph Mezzi, Sue Katz, Natalie Ginsberg, Michael Stokes, Dr. Will Bleckman, Marsha Coven, Sheila Resnick, and Susan Crow. Zichronam Livraha, may all of their memories forever bless us. If you're in the week of mourning, please rise at this time. If you're in the month of mourning, please rise. If you're in the year of mourning, please rise. And if it's a yard site of a loved one, please rise. We rise together as a congregational family and we join in the words of Kaddish Yatom, page 598 together. <laughs> Bahayahon of Yomahon of Ahaye de Gobe Israel, Bagala Vizman Kari Vimru Amen, Yahe Shime Rabba Mevarach Lealam Olame Almaya, Yit Barach Vishtabach Vipa Arvi Roma Viet Nase, Vita Dar Vita Levi Talal Shame de Gudisha Brihu, Leila Minkol Behata Vashirata, Tushbehata Venehemata, Dami Rambe Alma Vimru Amen, Yahe Shalama Rabba Min Shamaya Vahayim, Aleinu v'yol kol Yisrael, v'imru, amen. O se shalom v'imramav, hu ya'a se shalom. Aleinu v'yol kol Yisrael, v'imru, amen. O se shalom v'imramav, o ya'a se shalom aleinu, v'yol kol Yisrael, v'imru, Jacob reminds us that in our own lives, we can live looking back over our shoulders, worried about the consequences of our wrongdoing, or we can hold on tight to the present moment, struggle with whatever life gives us, and then try to move ourselves towards the quality 
of awe. We can let the beauty and blessings in our lives inspire us, help us feel grateful, and like Jacob, feel truly blessed. May that be the blessing of this Shabbat for each and every one of us, and we say amen. I'd like to thank so much Jenny and Alvaro for the beautiful music tonight. Thank you. And we have a closing song. It's simple. It's easy. Heveno Shalom Aleichem. And it's fun. Let's do it. Amazing. And now we have for Kiddush and Motsi, Shauna, Daniel, Aaron, Rex, and Natana Blonsky. Are you ready? Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Borei Peri Hagafen Amen Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Kedushanu B'mitzvotav Erhatavanu Veshabat Kadsho Ve'ahava Uvratzon Hinhilanu Sikaron Lemasei Yom tekela, lo mikra e kodesh, zechem tziah b'yitzvayim. Ki vanu v'harka, yatanu ki rashka, mikromim. Veshabat kodsheha, v'ahava in Hatanu, Baruch Hata Adonai, Mikadesh Hashavat. Amen. Lahayim. Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Hamotzi Lechem in Haaretz. Amen. Shabbat Shalom, everybody, and Mazel Tov to the Blonsky family, Mazel Tov, Aaron and Rex, Troy Mazel Tov, Troy Walensky, Mazel Tov. You guys, it's going to be a great day tomorrow. Shabbat Shalom. Welcome to all of our new members. Thank you all so much for being here. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom.